everybody, and welcome to Teach Me Tuesdays. I am one of your hosts, Roland. With me today, Proud. Yes. With me today, Proud. Well, what? I don't see when you introduce it like that. I'm not exactly sure what. Like, am I supposed to just say like "hi"? I guess. Because it's not like there's no real interesting way to interject in that without just like affirming that I am indeed here, which like, I, you know, you're hosting. I assume they trust you that I am here. So it's like with me is proud. And I'm like, hi, I'm proud. Like, I mean, yeah, you, you give like a, a do, 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 proud. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a, I imagine know, if just, like we're playing Street Fighter and then like I picked proud as well, like if we were my, playing street. I would like I would just like, you know, bounce up and down in like my fighting stance a little bit and I'd like <laughs> grunt at you. And that's like that doesn't translate well to an audio only media. Medium. No, it might not. Also, our other co-host, uh, new first uh, second episode you've ever recorded with Defense of the Patients, complete natural, uh, B Dub. Hello, hello. See? And also, like, what what just what, happened? You, what are you guys I scared mean... to be introduced? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, What's that? Just, I don't know. It's like how you how you do it. <laughs> how, how how do you guys do it on like, on Thursday? We just like. Yeah. You know, I just, well, I don't need to introduce myself because I'm always there. <laughs> and I just, and I normally start out the show interrupting your sanity. So it's like, oh, oh like, yeah. you, you know, it's like, you know who the fuck it is. Here we go. We got a, we got a, <laughs> we got a, a ringer of a review, but that, that was read on yesterday's show. What? I didn't hear um, shit. What happened? Uh, we can't talk about it. We'll talk about it. Just pretend you, that you yeah, already wait, what know is, because what we're is in the future. Show? Monday's show. It will have oh. been read on Monday's show. Because this show, right. even though we're yeah. recording no, it on the yeah, Saturday, this, right. this show comes yeah. out on Tuesday because it's Teach Me Tuesdays okay. with the alliteration. Right. Yeah. What's the, what's the account to look at the iTunes reviews? S- Defense of the can Patients. You, can, you, can you tell me the password right You don't now? need a password. You just go to iTunes and search okay. for Defense of the Patients, and there you go. All right. And yeah, if you I'm guys want to leave a review on how we're doing so far, please go ahead. Um, hey, Roland, guess what? What? You already talked to her beat up once. Oh. What'd you say, beat up? I said, I, I like really intrigued as to what this actually says. Because we were talking about it yeah, earlier as it well. Up. And I'm just like. What? Who, when? I wasn't involved. You were involved in the other Patreon episode with Leafy. Oh, yeah, you guys were, okay, you guys were talking about, because I thought she was, like, communal, I thought it was the three of us, not this exclusive <laughs> you know, there's, there's situation. Some, so there's some exclusivity going on. Anyway, uh, we're here today to kind of bring back um, something of Proudland, um, some aspects of Proudland, uh, the teaching aspect of Proudland. Um, I know I missed it. Um, I know a lot of you... Uh, messaged me, messaged Proud, messaged the universe, uh, saying, you know, it's a bummer, Proudland's gone. And there's a whole bunch of reasons that I could give for why Proudland isn't still around. But I am so excited to say that I am now joined with Proud and B-Dub. And we're going to be doing a rotating cast of characters. Uh, the three that I just mentioned, um, plus Leafy Peachy. Cyphus and Ursinity, and we are going to learn how to be better at Dota 2. Uh, so for the start of this episode, B-Dub, do you want to go ahead and go over your goals uh, for this show and being sure. a co-host or being a co-host? So I am predominantly a support player. Uh, it's kind of been that way since I ever first started playing Dota, just because I was new to the game and that's how I learn and I was very scared about going any other position um, but then I had a, a taste of PA and I was kind of hooked. It was a lot of fun killing people so <laughs> as opposed to just watching other people kill people. So yeah I want to be more of a core and my overall goals uh, I want to reach an average GPM and XPM of over 500 because currently mine's shockingly bad and my overall goal eventually is to calibrate between 3 and 3.5k okay um, hey, well, good luck and yeah, i've never I, played ranked ever before by the way not even party ranked i have no i've never played i've never calibrated open dota thinks i am 2.5 um but i don't 
think there's any point in calibrating low when there's so much more I can improve on and calibrate higher. Especially when you can just play unranked where games are like actually relatively uh, like l low lower MMR unranked games. You like get friendly people sometimes. Like every friend I've ever made in Dota two that's lasted has been a friend I made in unranked. And in ranked, it's just been fucking like like you meet someone and then you don't ever play with them again because you're still playing solo queue. Yeah. And on ranked, like, you, your your party games are still like you know based on your hidden MMRs. It's great. So it's still kind of like ranked in normal. I yeah, see. Like you, you can stack with your friends and like you're still getting what will eventually become your MMR. Like it's good stuff. I don't think I don't think uh, solo ranked and unranked are separate. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Wow. I, see, I don't. That's a fun question. I just, I'm. You know, I mean, you guys have heard my my take on that. I just kind of like to know that I'm going to lose something or win something at the end of the yeah. game. Um, well, I mean, hey, I'm I'm in agreement. I, I always like to play ranked, but if, mm -hmm. if you're if you're worried about like where you want to calibrate, like I don't know, I've like this is a kind of total side tangent, but a lot of people talk every so often about like whether or not um, that like party ranks should be like more emphasized or if like they should merge them or whatever. But I'm I'm just kind of of the opinion now that I want party ranked and solo ranked to be merged because I want to be incentivized to play with people, right? And I think that's really cool about unranked is that like. Your, your party games will eventually count towards your solo rank. So, like, if you haven't calibrated yet and you want to calibrate, you know, above 2K or whatever, like, just play a shit ton of, like, unranked. That way you can play party games and not feel like you're wasting your time. Mm, it's, like, effectively, before you calibrate, every unranked party game is 25 solo MMR plus or minus, right? So, like, that's... Interesting. That's cool. That's good. I like that. Yeah, that I've never is. thought about that before. So now you can be upset every time you lose an unranked match oh, with no. your friends. And say, you just <laughs> fucked me out of 25 solo MMR. Yeah, there you go. I just need, I need them to be like, you just invisibly lost 25. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it's invisible, though. So my goal, Proud, um, is to stop with my shenanigans um, and get to 4K. Sure, a lot of them. And get, and get to 4K. Okay. Um, I, I believe I've played enough Dota. Um, I... I do think I could be a 4K player. I don't think I am a 4K player. Um, I have no uh, uh, delusions uh, because I was at one point close to 4K. Uh, I think the meta was in my favor, and I think I was abusing the meta. Um, You're abusing Viper. At least that's Viper true. And, and this Lich. is the perfect time to abuse Viper. Oh, and Lich, like this is this is this is the meta you want. I guess last patch was no. When, when you were doing this, it was roughly right when seven in the same out. spot. It was, it was just before people realized. Yeah, yeah. and I just kind of had the same. I did the same thing. I was like an automaton. I mean, you know, I was just like, I sacrifice creep. I buy wards. I get movement speed. I get bounty runes, and that's kind of before. I guess bounty runes were quote unquote figured out. I want to say. Like, yeah. it's funny to say figured out because it's pretty obvious. Like, they're static. They just stay there. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of how I made my way. The second I started falling was when I started playing core. Um, and I, I... Core and not Viper. Core and not, not Viper, yeah. So <laughs> I definitely want to reach 4K, like, legitimately. Like, with a, with a good pool of heroes and feel good saying that I'm a 4K player, not a 4K Viper or a 4K Lich, or something like that. So, Right. Um, today's episode, we wanted to uh, ask you, Sir Teacher, uh, about climbing MMR as a position one. Um, yes, my teachlings. This, <laughs> this is B-Dub. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and give us a, a little, uh, little talking about what your, your goal is here with, with that in mind. Um, well, I've been playing Sven, PA, and Wraith King. Um, I'm having sad Sven times. Can't seem to get to grips with that. I guess like, I just want to be able to learn how to properly play a position one to like, it's right. full. I don't know. I'm not, I'm just, I'm like not very efficient, right? Do. This is the problem. I'm not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely some part of it. Um, so the, the first thing that I would want to like, push at you is just like okay so you i mean at least you you said farming efficiency right so you you you, you know for a fact that like a one needs to like get a shit ton of farm yeah. right and like faster than anyone yeah. else um but like the so like 
think about a hero like um, like m- most carries. Um, so this hero is like uh, Juggernaut. Is Juggernaut is kind of the perfect example. Um, Faceless Void is also a carry. Sometimes he's not, but like we'll, we'll talk about Faceless Void a little bit too. Um, I want to get one other example of of a very similar hero to these. Um, we'll say like Sniper is more of a, of a two than a one, if, if anything. Um, I'll say. Um, Oh, God, I'm glad that I'm just kind of, like, stalling out completely here. We'll say Spectre, too. So, like, Spectre, Juggernaut, and um, and, and Faceless Void. Like, uh, if you think about those three heroes, like, what is the main thing that you're scared about with those heroes? Like, if, you, if you're going up against them, like, what's the thing that you're, you're planning around or trying to watch out for? Maybe Spectre's not quite as emphasized, but, like, Juggernaut and Faceless Void, for sure, there's just, like, one thing that you in general are trying to watch out for. In the game... Like in laning, in laning. Yeah, like or... if, you're, if you're fighting against them. Oh wait, no, just just in like you know, come come like thirty minutes once like you know they're they're carrying the game. Like what's the like what are you watching out for? Uh, wait, am I playing those two or am I against those two? <laughs> no, 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 you're you're, the, you're you're against them. Like if you're if you're fighting a juggernaut, you're trying to win a game okay. against a juggernaut or a faces void. Like there's like one thing you're fucking like you're you're worried about. And you gotta like minimize how much it fucks you up. Ah, oh, damn! I don't, the, like their <laughs> ults, they're pretty strong. Like, yeah, yeah, they're 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 ultimates, right? Like the it's the Chronosphere and and the Omni Slash and like the the prime aspects of those abilities is like if Juggernaut, like if the second Juggernaut presses R, like you're not fighting Juggernaut, you're just trying not yeah. to die. And if uh, Void presses R, you're not fighting Void. I mean, unless you're Venge, then you, in which case you're trying to swap someone out of Chronosphere and then right. you die. But like you're you're just you try not to die, and those abilities are kind of like what makes them a carry, right? Like a Juggernaut without Omni Slash, um, he's just a dude who right clicks, and a Faces Void without Chrono, again, just a dude that right clicks. Like yeah, he can bash and you know like untake some damage or whatever, but that's kind of it. And then Spe- Spectre is a, a bit different, but uh, Spectre kind of comes back to the earlier point. But the the point being is like you're worried about those abilities because those are set times where those heroes are going to transfer their their net worth that they've accumulated straight into damage. It'll turn items into, like, effective damage on the map. Um, and the harder carries to play are the heroes that have less intuitive and less obvious ways to turn straight-up farm into, like, kills, which then turn into, like, map objectives. So, like, a hero like um, like Sven, Sven has a very set system where he turns... All of the farm that he takes into kills, into a tower immediately, or into nothing. Um, and the, similar, like PA is also kind of similar. Um, she has a very kind of set way where she turns her net worth into objectives. Um, and then there's some. Then you know, heroes like Clinks are a bit more obvious. Like a uh, Drow is a little bit more obvious. Drow just turns net worth into damage for her team. So and so all she has to do is like not die. But like the central aspect of a carry is it's a hero that can 100% guaranteed turn net worth and gold or whatever the gold that they intake into into objectives like there are other heroes like um like i think of a legion commander is a fantastic uh, hero here to bring up legion commander is a hero that can um she she has like abilities to right click like she has infinite scaling damage and shit but unlike a hero like faceless void or, or juggernaut it's like incredibly difficult for her to turn like you can have a, a legion commander with like plus 400 damage and she has like this double strike in a duel or whatever but outside of like outside of you know getting a duel on someone which is blocked by lincoln's and only touches one person and you can't do anything after you duel like she doesn't have anything that is going to guarantee that she turns her damage her net worth her you know like her capabilities into killing people in team fights right so like w- when you're approaching a carry the first thing you need to think of it's like, what is the safest situation where I can turn the tools that I have and the items that I farmed and like all this net worth and, you know, like just how can I turn my hero's resources and properties into like effective value in the game? Right. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> that Very was a so lot of information. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, so you think about Sven, like. What, um, yeah, like Sven, Sven is super crazy, but like, okay, so you, you, you farm, farm, farm all game, right? And then like, what, and th- this is like really hard to pin down. So I mean, like, I, I'm kind of notorious for just asking a bunch of leading questions that get obnoxious, <laughs> but like, it's important that, that you can kind of I- I- identify this or at least go into like, like you want to be able to replicate the mindset of like thinking about this 
and then once you're in a game, it, it's like, oh, okay, now I know how to think about this and I can, you know, like figure this out every time I play a hero. But like when you're playing Sven, um, what is like the period where you're able to do Sven things? Blink dagger. That's, that's part of it. <laughs> if I just blink up to someone and then Lion hexes me, I'm not doing Sven things yet, am I? I'm just being hexed. Blink dagger BKB. Well, that's, that's certainly part of it. But if I blink up to Lion and then Lion starts walking. Blink dagger stun bkb right okay so now i've i'm now uh, but i'm you know i'm sven i hit for like 100 i hit for like 120 180 or something so i hit we, we were talking once. about this on the patreon episode too how hard sven's <laughs> combo was okay i think we got it figured out b yeah. you want to try and give the answer here um <laughs> on his combo on sven's combo <laughs> <laughs> so it was wait well like so we yeah we were talking about this earlier we were just like wait which way around is it again um yeah. so oh, and you got a you mask wanna, of madness too and yeah. you got all this yep. shit mm -hmm. go wait, for it so I'm, am i am i going for it okay so yes yeah you got shreds you've got mask of madness ideally you have echo saber because you're not doing your brother's build anymore you're doing the echo saber <laughs> you know what's up um um okay so you want to Alt. Yeah. Wait, do you want to alt first? No. Oh fuck yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. Okay. Don't you wanna, question yourself. Just you yeah. want to you want to alt first, right? Yeah. Then why not? blink in. Yep. Sure. And then wait. Oh no. Alt. God's kind of sucks. Blink. You don't have your war cry yet. Yeah. Oh. Um. God's strength. War cry. Blink. Then go. stun. Then mask of madness. Hell yeah. Right. And then yeah. So you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then slice, 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 slice. Right. And then, and then okay, hopefully so, you so kill everyone, then, right? Yeah, but, I mean, you're not gonna, because uh, you, I mean, you ult it or whatever, but you do, like, you don't have your Daedalus yet, we, do, we don't have that, so you do, like, you do a lot of damage, it's just, you don't one-shot anyone yet. So, like, even with all that shit, you've killed, like, maybe one person, um, and maybe you've cleaved another couple people down to half health, but now your stun's on cooldown, you have, like, five seconds left of your BKB, your Echo Saber's on cooldown, your Stormhammer's on cooldown, and you've pretty much got nothing. And a hero that, like a Sven that doesn't have nothing is a Sven that just kind of walks at you and then they like walk away and kite you and kill you. So like even then with all that shit, you're not guaranteed to get everything off and you're not guaranteed to 100% like do all of your Sven things. And that's why Sven is like a ridiculously dumb hard hero. Um, or maybe not like dumb hard, but just like you can, you. It's very easy to get into a place with with heroes like Sven or Phantom Assassin, where if you're not incredibly aware of like what your exact timing is and the exact limits of your hero, you can go in and then like like with with Sven, if you're fighting a hero like Queen of Pain, your your kill window is like you blink, you stun, and if you don't kill her in literally two seconds, she blinks out, and then you did nothing, and your BKB's done, you're not next to anyone, and everything fucking sucks, and you, like, get kited, and then you die. And, like, <laughs> that's the hero. The hero is two seconds of killing everyone or killing no one. And yeah. if you have, like, any amount of lack of comfort on the hero, you're gonna just, like, get all your items and then blink in and die and just feed a shit ton of net worth for no reason. Um, yeah, that, so you, that sounds you, like, like my recent games. <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the issue i was having with sven for a while is i kept doing these like um i kept being like the only stun on my team and thinking i needed to like initiate and make you know a lot of openings for my team and i would be playing sven in a pub and i would just be like man the same going like shit i'm just gonna go mask blink skip my echo skip my s and y which was the build at the time and just like keep trying to do these fights and i would just like blink and get someone to like you know 30 percent and then my team would try to follow up and they would win the fight and i would die but i would just like i'm the carry so i'm the one who can like definitely gather my net worths but as the game go went on as I kept like dying, being the initiator and not being the one who's cleaning up the entire fight, like I fell off and the other team got forward and, you know, my supports got levels, but it doesn't fucking matter because, you know, a, a disruptor that has a lot of farm doesn't have blink god strength. It has a, a sweet ulti that people can't BKB out of. But if someone initiates on the disruptor, they just fucking die. If someone initiates on Sven with a shit ton of farm, I BKB and I punch him right back and I win the fucking game. Um, so you need to like... Again, like the absolute main thing with, with a core is you need to identify what the exact situation is where I can guaranteed transfer all of my net worth into value within the game. It's like the difference between having money and having objects. Like you got a lot of money, that's great, but you got to like, you got to spend it on things. Otherwise it just doesn't do anything. It just like kind of exists. And then you get this gross capitalist society of the fucking America or whatever. <laughs> all right. So this is a good break. This is a good break point for... Uh, taking this back a little bit. So uh, you talked about Sven and that 
pretty much answered a lot of questions. That was honestly really interesting because in my mind, if I blunk in as Sven or blinked in or whatever, it's Sven. And blunkered, yeah. I think. Is the <laughs> blunkered. If I blunkered in as Sven and stunned the whole team and got everybody to 30%, died, and then my warlock cleaned it up, I would be like, oh, good job. We won. But if I do that enough times, you're absolutely right. I didn't get any net worth from from that. So that's that's yeah. a really interesting point to I mean, bring you, up. I mean, you may get assists or whatever, but yeah, I mean, like if you, if you, yeah. It, but it I'm can dead. Be, it can be pretty I'm shit. not getting Oh, no, experience. no, you're, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah it's, it's AOE gold, not assists. Yeah, Sorry, I was I'm like just, I'm, fucking thinking about Dota and Dota terms. Yeah, so I was like, I'm, how on earth could that, could that work out for you? Yeah, yeah no, I'm, that won't be good unless you fucking... Uh, you bloodthorned someone and then that popped after you died. I was oh, really just trying to figure out a single okay. way where that would yeah. be okay. It, uh, but I mean, it, 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 but then you went bloodthorn and like, you're going to fucking lose. Bloodthorn sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's, but, let's go to the basics. I mean, it's, it's good if you, I mean, I, I'll trade my Sven for a five man wipe. That's, you know, that's, that's okay. For but sure. yeah, that's, that's not ideal. Not like, but sure. if you do that 10 times, I mean, now all of a sudden I still only have a Chris, Chrysalis, well, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm still, yeah. I'm, I still don't have my right. If you kill everyone except for one of their cores and comp- continually do that, then yeah, maybe it's not great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a good point. Um, okay, so let's let's, anyway, let's yeah. dial this back and let's go to, um, I know I struggle with this um, and I know a lot of other people struggle. Um, B-Dub brought it up earlier as well that, you know, she definitely needs to work on the basics as a, a position one player. So just got to lane. Um, we're playing one of these heroes. Can we just can we just go over like what are the basics? What do we need to be doing here? Like this is stuff we should know, but it's nice to hear again. Um. Uh, sorry, what? The the basics, like the basics, is in like positioning my hero. Uh, just like for lane if phase I'm dealing with range. Okay. Yeah, yeah like, like getting the, the, the tough lane. From like zero minute. How I deal with yeah, that tough zero, lane, boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Tough lane, easy lane. Just what do I need to, when do I back? Like, I know on every single Tortellini guide, it says that I get spectral dagger first so I can get away or spin first so I can spin away or like, why, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first off, as far as items go, on literally every hero, um, you're either doing a poor man shield opening or a stout shield opening. Um, I can't think of a single melee hero that it doesn't go in that direction. Um, the poor man shield opening is going to be two slippers of oh god, two slippers of agility, and then that gives you enough extra gold for two pieces of uh, of health regen, which is a tango or or a salve. And normally you just go one tango, one salve. That way, if you take a shit ton of damage out of nowhere, you can salve up, stay in lane. If you're taking some gradual damage, you can use a you can use a tango. Um, and then you know, you just kind of keep those around for the entirety of the laning phase. Um, and then you'll have a little mech, a little bit of uh, money left over for a clarity or maybe a. Um, or maybe an iron branch or for a fairy fire if you're lone druid specifically or you know maybe one or two other heroes um, but in general like you're either going to want that that poor man shield opening um or you're going to want to do the the stout shield opening which is for mostly like strength heroes who aren't interested in the poor man shield and that's also mostly if you're not going to be contested in lane that much and that's the stout shield tango salve and then um oftentimes you get a mango and a clarity or a mango and a branch or whatever. I typically almost always go Stout Shield, uh, Tango Salve, Mango Clarity on most of my my safe laners um, that aren't agi. It, like on Juggernaut and Anti Mage, I'll do the Poor Man Shield with the double slippers, um, and on and like Monkey King as well. Um, and sometimes PA if I know I'm not going to go for Vanguard or, or something like that. Uh, but anyway, like the I mean Troll Ruler too. Anyway, the the point being like in general uh, for most heroes, you want to be in a situation where. Um, the items that you buy from the base are pretty much all defen- all defensive items. Sorry, I'm like half coughing. That's because okay. at the side shop, every offensive item you could possibly want is available there, except for like Blightstone. But like, if you're spending 300 of your starting gold on a Blightstone, like you need to radically reevaluate your choices. A 10% difference in your damage is not going to be worth 300 gold at level 1. And if it is going to be, it's going to be later on, and that's what a fucking courier is for. Like, you need to get boots. Like, would you rather have a Blightstone or boots? That's a very, like, small difference. Get the fucking boots. Boots are good. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, B-Dub, what are, what are your starting items? Um, so, 
I have, well, Proud told me to go for the Stout Tango Self Mango combo, so that is what I've been doing. <laughs> oh, we got, he got to you first. Professional yeah. player right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is actually what I've been doing. But before that, I would just tell, I would just do whatever the guide told me to. To be honest, I wouldn't put much thought into it. I would just go, okay, this is what Tortellini says. So this is what I'm gonna do, and that is what I did. Thoughts on that, proud? Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely like good to do. Um, to do that, like one of the things I, I, I think I most hearken back to in terms of like, like even, I mean, I'm not, you know, the best fucking player in the world or whatever, but I will stand by that. Um, like you are much better, you know, following my advice than, um, than like either a worse player's advice or no one's advice. If you don't like know what to do, um, like it's, it's, it's better to follow someone who at least, you know, has a cursory understanding of what to do rather than like follow what no one knows how to do if, if, or if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, like, you know, take, take a guide if you, if you have no idea, that's, that's totally good. The, the best thing of course is to understand, you know, like where that's coming from and why that's the thing to do after you see it. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying to pick up as much, uh, as much information as possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, go for it. I, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, follow a tortellini guide. That's probably better than not knowing what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's my opinion. Okay, yeah, so since since I started actually going with your build, though, proud, I've actually been like winning PA games. So, well, that's good. so there must be something to it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's this thing about proud. So we get back from TI and proud's spreading the gospel of the Monkey King carry, and next thing I know, everybody <laughs> on my friends list is playing Monkey King carry, including myself. Uh, and what a time that is. That yeah, is good, maybe huh? the, it's, whether it's good or not, it's the most fun I've ever had playing Dota. Yeah. To be able to jump from tree to tree and just cleave shit down. And you just kill uh, everyone. It's, it's yeah, so good. It's, the, the other thing about it that's great for pubs is it's, it's like it wins its lane on its own, right? So like if you're in a pub and oh, no one's supporting, like whatever, you're a carry that farms as fast as anti-mage and you win your lane. It's fucking broken. Yeah. And I, I have a great. feeling... I, I mean, I don't know how you f fix it. Maybe you lower Monkey King's attack range so he's don't not a ranged he's hero. Good. You know what fine. I mean? Because the, the whole reason he wins his lane, if I'm not mistaken, is because he's basically a ranged melee hero. He's like a ranged Ursa. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's, like, that's part yeah. of it. Yeah, sure. That's I mean, that's certainly part of it is that I like I, I pick Monkey King against Axe. Like Axe isn't supposed to be countered by a quote unquote melee here. Like that's not how he works, but it works anyways. Um, yeah, I, I, I was thinking about this earlier. Like uh, there was like some thread where I was like loosely mentioned somewhere. Um, and then people were like, proud nurse, you suck. They're like 3K. And I was like, well, one, that's not accurate. And two, yeah, we kind of we kind of do suck. But as far as like what what I'm good at, I think it's pretty much only coming up with builds and then like team coordination and like 5v5 stuff. Like I'm not a great mechanical player by any stretch. And like I'm really bad at a lot of shit. Um, but at least at least at the very least I know how to talk and I know how to make builds. So I'm I'm glad that you're winning with the with the PA build. And the PA build is kind of, is the old one that that Cyphus goes where you go Vanguard so it's not a double uh, it's not a double slipper start. Yeah. Um but if you weren't going Vanguard then you would go the double slipper. But yeah, like I yeah, I love that PA build. Will you, you get the man the build P uh beat up? Uh oh yeah, sorry. Her. Yes. Yeah, so Start off with the Stout Tango Salve Mango, and then try and get Boots, Ring of Health, Sage, Stout, Quell at six minutes. Like, that's what you want to have, right? Yeah, wow. Typically the Quell first, just for the, the yeah. last hits, right? Oh, yeah, that wasn't necessarily in order, by the way. I was just reading them out. Yeah. And then go for the Phase, finish Phase Boots, right? Yep. And then you go Bassy, and then A Aki. And then Vanguard, and then Deso Basha Abyssal. Yeah, you just can't Ooh. kill everyone. Yeah, that's that's. And then after that, that, I just oh, yeah, pick yeah. Some, mm. I pick something at random and hope it's okay. <laughs> that's it. That's and a for the most part, it's been game. yeah. But yeah, that's um yeah that that was like so part part of wanting to make this this show or me being like enthused about it is when uh, B started playing PA. Um, I saw her on uh, in, in PA, and I was like, oh, like. Let me please let me tell you what to build to ensure that you have a fun time playing Dota 2. <laughs> um, and I was like, and then, you know, worked out and it was like, all right, cool. This is fun. I like builds and fucking hang out with people. Um, but there's like a lot of issues that I see with 
like a shit ton of people whenever they're trying a build and they just go through it in like a really fucking rote fashion. There's even people in, in my games that are just like, it's it just kind of like hurts to see. Um, when you see like, let's say someone um, like, okay, let's let's say you're playing, um, Sven isn't exactly the perfect example, but let's say you're playing like Anti-Mage. This is something people have figured out on Anti-Mage, but they haven't brought it to most other heroes. Like if you are in lane, and you are going an item that is going to have a health regen component in it at some point in time, uh, get that early if you are losing health. Like if, if I'm playing, um, if I'm playing, uh, like, let's see, what's a good hero for it? Since they changed Helm of the Dominator, this doesn't come up quite as much. But, um, I mean, PA is the perfect example because we just brought it up. But yeah, if, if I'm playing PA, like, in general, if you look at any build, it's going to tell you, like, Okay, um, if you're going Vlad's or you're going Vanguard, either one. And Vanguard is sanctioned; it's 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 fine. At certain skill levels, it's it's even good. And then at higher levels, it's like very situational to the point that MP on Secret won a game with it as one of the few actual successful PAs. Um, but you would go like it, in general, you want to go like Phase, and then a Wand, and then um, and then either a Quilla or something like that, or or that into into Vlad's or that into uh, in, or that into Vanguard. Um, normally you go into Deso, but I'm just saying if you are going to get a health regen item, um, if you're at like 300 health and you have one tango left, like, or, or, or you have a salve left or just a salve or something, you know, like the second I use the salve, I'm not getting any, any health back. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if a fucking Zeus ults from mid lane and I'm down to 400 health for no fucking reason, like I either have to leave the lane or ship regen out. And if I don't have my face finished yet. Um, and I'm still trying to finish my phase boots. Like if I just spend 900 gold and I'm down to hundred gold Zeus ultis and I'm a thousand gold away from my, like, uh, my lifesteal mask or I'm 700 gold away from my ring of health. Like I can't stay in lane, but instead if I recognize I'm low on regen and I just don't buy my phase boots and instead I just buy a ring of health, like I'm fine and I can stay in lane and farm up my phase boots. Right? Like right. there's no reason, like if you know the items you're going to get soon, there's no reason to not just change up the order to ensure that you can stay in lane. So, like, a, a lot of these heroes, like um, Phantom Assassin and Troll Lord when he was going Vlad's and that sort of thing, um, Monkey King with the Ring of Health, Morphling with the Ring of Health, um, like, if you know you're going to get an item like that relatively soon, uh, just, like, change up your order. Um, like, if you like, the, the PA, like, yeah, the, the build that is safest to go is uh, Brown Boots and then Ring of Health and then Sage's Mask. You haven't finished Phase Boots. You haven't finished your Basilius or your Aquila. You haven't finished um, your Vanguard. But either way, like you, the, the most important part of the Bassi is the mana regen. So you get your Sage's Mask. The most important part early game of the Vanguard is just that it sustains you. So you get that. The most important part of Phase Boots is the fucking Boots part. The Phase part of that name is not as important as the Boots. <laughs> so just get three little parts and you can fucking stay in lane you win you fucking you win the lane like you don't you're not at 200 health for no reason you then you die the number of times i've seen a fucking sven just like sitting in lane with a finished goddamn like treads at 200 health just waiting for like that one health regen per second like what like that was predictable like you were out of regen why did you finish your fucking treads <laughs> get, a, get a morbid mask it's life steal you don't have life steal mm, it that's good that's really good i so what i often find because uh I play those Ring of Health heroes, uh, the Morphlings, um, the Anti Mages, you know, uh, PA. E sometimes. Even if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go like Hur Hurricane Pike, and you identify like I need life regen, like I just yeah, need it. Force so staff has a Ring of buy, Health. Buy it. Yeah. Um, sure. The what I've also noticed though is like I'll be. Let's say I'm Drow Ranger. I'm properly positioned, and I'm against a, a a tusk or something. I'm against a hero basically that doesn't really threaten me that much. Um, well, tusk. Well, maybe maybe a different, a different hero. hero. Yeah, I'm bad at good. picking examples. I, I still yeah. Tusk is a perfect hero to threaten a, a drow. Yeah. Say, well, maybe not drow. Okay, let's say yeah. Uh, and I'm playing you know Morphling or something, and I'm not threatened. Fuck yeah, you are. Let's say I'm just I'm yeah, just not threatened. Right, tusk is unthreatening. I'm just not threatened. Uh, like they they're just basically conceding and just letting me have the lane. But I still will buy the Ring of Health. There's also the alternative to that where there are times you don't need the regen. Um, like you, I'm still, I still have three or four of my tangos. Haven't even used the salve. Yeah. Don't go and buy the ring of health. It's, it's effectively doing nothing at that point. Um, right. in, the, in the landing phase. And I find all the time where I'm like, good thing I have this ring of health. If anybody comes in and starts harassing me, cause then I'll heal right back up. 
And it, it's just kind of like a mental thing. Like you feel better yeah, yeah. the second it's in your inventory. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And there's like the, a lot of people do a lot of mental math on it. Like, um, and just, they just kind of like underestimate how unpredictable a game of Dota is. Like if you have full health, but only one tango left, um, I mean, there may be some situations where you know for a fact that you'll be fine, but, like, if they have a roamer on their team and, like, their off lane is missing, you don't really know what's going on, like, get the ring of health. Like, just, just maybe, maybe just get it, because if, like, if Zeus ulties or someone rotates in and they beat the shit out of you, you're down to, like, 200 health, and then you use your tango, like, great, you're up to 300, maybe 350 by the time the duration ends because of natural regen, and fucking then what? Like... And you just spent all your gold. You have 200 gold left. You just finished treads. Like, you can't farm lane with 300 health. So, like, if you're out of regen, then, yeah, like, buy buy more um, from the side shop if it's going to build towards another item. Um, and if you are have all your regen, sure, like, yeah, keep, you know, finish those treads and start pushing the tower. Finish your Aquila, you know, whatever. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, I guess moving on to the next question that B-Dub and I uh, kind of formulated for this episode um is specifically this this kind of had to do with Sven you touched on it on when to aggress on these heroes but i think pa yeah. pa is watching you play pa um was really fun uh because it's not as straightforward as you'd think uh before you answer proud b dub when do you when what are you, what is your what are your thoughts on uh, aggressing as a pa um Item wise, situational wise, whatever. Uh, what do you What do you mean by that? Like what? Like you like mean when, like when you're when in is the it lane? Time to like go when in. is it time to go in? Yeah, like when are you like okay? I I I smell blood. Like like what is that? What is the situation that you have to be in on Phantom Assassin to kind kind of like uh, when, when you're thinking about Sven? Like what is the situation I need to engage on someone with Sven? Like what is the situation with PA where like. What, yeah, like, what, what's the situation where I'll be like, all right, this is a time where PA can do PA things? Um, like, what, what, do you, what are PA things? And what, what, like, what needs crits. to exist to, like, allow a PA thing to crits happen? Crits of PA <laughs> things. <laughs> all right, so you just fucking put the hands together, look up at the sky, close your eyes, mutter your hymns, no, and then so you fucking blink strike the shit out crit. of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah. Is there a specific deity or <laughs> no just just all all of them uh, just, you just kind of across the board rng yeah. that one too just like honestly maybe. like I, like i think this is part of my problem is i don't know when i can have that moment you know what i mean i also think this is part of my problem with spend and all calls yeah. generally like i kind of go oh well oh, they kind of look like they're kind of alone and yeah I, I mean let's let's try it and then and then I either kill them or I die or I get halfway and then I run off. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, that's yeah. I know that that was kind of finished. Yeah. So this, that's a huge part of like, and like I, I've talked to a lot of like really fucking good Dota players and a lot of them just like, don't really know how anything works. They just know how it all works naturally. Like it's, it's really difficult to get. And this is why there's not a lot of great Dota guides. Like, Dota is a game that you play just like hundreds of thousands of hours of, and then you just kind of figure out how it works through like repetition. Um, and that's why like moving to a new role is hard. Maybe learning a new hero is hard. And why you see when people are learning, like when, uh, when Eternal Envy was like learning Invoker, he would just like fail miserably because he would keep trying to do all these like dumb, stupid ass shit. And then, you know, six months later, on Team NP, like, uh, him and AUI together made, like, their Sven Invoker first two because they just were so fucking brutal together and because they just knew how to do it. Um, and, that's, and, that's, and that's playing core. Like, you need to experiment with your limits all the time. Um, so when playing PA, like, yeah, blink on that lion. And then if it turns out that you can crit and kill that lion before the lion's turn speed to hex you, um, plus the lion himself's reaction time, like... You know, there's, these are like exact things that you kind of need to figure out. And then also plus whether or not like you'll be able to crit. Um, like these are all things that you just kind of feel out. Um, and same thing with Sven. Like, you know, I, I didn't play my first game of Sven and say, all right, I need to blink one shot everyone. And I know exactly how that's going to happen. Um, like you need to just kind of keep doing it being like, well, that didn't fucking work. Let's never try that <laughs> one again. And then you're going to do, you're going to try it again. It's not going to work again. You'll be like, all right, maybe this time I'll fucking remember. And that's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's Dota 2. Like you need to learn the limits of these heroes and there's no, there's nothing that you can do to just like fucking have it happen on your own. And that's why I say 
carries are the heroes that can most reliably turn their net worth into damage because every hero can can do that to a point. Um, but like you know, Juggernaut is really easy because like an Omni Slash is gonna kill someone. Like it just is. Yeah. Like it, at level six or seven, an Omni Slash into Spin. Like Omni Slash keeps you on top of someone, and then Spin does like seven hundred damage or some stupid shit like that. Like it's very easy to like. There's no limits to be aware of as Juggernaut. If you're ahead, your Omni Slash will kill. If you're not, it's not. But as a hero like Sven, like blinked into bl- like blink, and then I Echo Saber, and then I Mask of Madness. I get maybe like three or four hits in. Like I'm not sure exactly how much damage a Sven hit does. Like you can look at the number. But you also need to look at their health and their armor, and like it's it's something that you very much need to need to feel out. But like the key yeah. to like saying that is kind of discouraging, because it's like great, I just have to play a shit ton. But <laughs> there's a there's a there's a difference between like playing just a shit ton and then like dying a lot, and then like knowing exactly what you're trying to look for. Um, and with with carries, it's nice that they have items and they have kind of like timings that you can think of, and everything follows a kind of similar like uh, theme. Like there's tanky fours. There's tanky threes, there's squishy fives, there's kind of like mid squishy mids, and then there's like, you know, car- agi carries and, or I guess squishy carries, and then not squishy carries. And you can kind of just have those four categories or whatever. And like, oh, if I'm Sven and I have, uh, if I have Echo and, uh, and Mask of Madness and, and my ulti, I can probably blink stun and kill a squishy support, but I can only get a mid to like half health or something. And I can get a four to half health and I can get a carry to maybe a third with my combo. And then you just kind of keep that in mind. Oh, but then once I get my Daedalus, I can probably kill a mid flat out. And then I can I can probably kill a four flat out. Uh, and an off laner in a safe lane, I can probably get to about half health or, or like, you know, a third health at that point. And like once you get these kind of like base general guidelines, then you can kind of keep going forward with it. So then you get to a point with PA where you're like, all right, every dagger throw is going to make a support very scared. Um, and a yeah. dagger throw will equal a, a dagger throw crit will equal the kill opportunity. So now I know I'm PA, I'm just going to keep tossing daggers at supports and then try to kill them. Once you get to another point, you're like, all right, dagger tosses are now making the mids scared. So now I'm just going to keep fishing for any uh, dagger crits on mids or just a dagger hit on a support into like a bling stripe will will be a kill on a support. And like you just get these kind of general baseline assumptions for these heroes. And PA is kind of similar on Sven where it's just like you either have your damage or you have your damage plus a crit. And if you get a crit, then, then you're good. Um, and it's a little bit for PA, a little bit of muscle memory of like, oh, okay, I got like three auto attacks off and one didn't crit. I should, um, I should look for this fight. And then my, one of my, you know, within my blink strike, my next four auto attacks, probably one of them will crit or something like that. Hmm. I think, uh, yeah, like definitely I will continue playing PA. She's a lot of fun and she's kind of, I've kind of understand her a little bit more, but I I have to say like, I mean, you were just talking about Sven. Like, I just seem to be like miles away from really understanding him. Like, I kind of wonder whether I should maybe put a pin in Sven and like play something else until I really and like get to grips with the uh, like the position one role a bit more. Yeah, I I think I think I would kind of agree with that. Sven is re- a relatively like straightforward hero, but he's kind of like um, a lot of the heroes and characters in, in games that I'm like more drawn to are the ones that are like. Uh, they have very obvious mechanics, um, but the the like the minutia of them is very much emphasized. And Sven is exactly like that. He's a carry where your farm period is like massively inflated, and your flashpoint of turning that farm into a game win is like seconds. Like it's less time than when Juggernaut is inside of an Omni Slash, and it's way harder to pick out. So, like, I feel like Sven is almost, like... Like, Anti-Mage is kind of the, the limit of that, like, AFK farmy, uh, split-push, like, solo player carry. And Sven is kind of the, like, the extreme of um, of just, like, the idea of, like, farm and then team fight. And he's just, like, he's, like, that to the fucking nth degree. He's just, like, yeah. farm nonstop. And then you team fight for one second, and either you win or lose the game. And it's really hard to learn the game when you are only getting one or two effective learning periods at, at a time. Like with PA, every blink strike is going to teach you basically the same amount as an entire game where you only get one real engagement on Sven, right? Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I would, I would recommend Big maybe time. stepping away from that Sven. Who would you so, recommend I love him. instead? Like, yeah, do you think Luna would be a good... Oh, Luna's always the carry that I recommend to people. Um, she has a nuke. 
Uh, so she, she, her lane control is like relatively simple. She farms absurdly fast. She pushes absurdly fast. Her, the way that she fights is you stop moving and you a click the ground and you just take your hands off the keyboard and press R sometimes. (laughs) Um, and, and her, and Eclipse is like a get out of jail free card. Like, Oh, three people are are trying to kill me and I'm out of position. I press R and then I win the fight. Um, yeah, she's great. So there are a lot of issues with the hero, but, um, yeah, no, she, she's, she is always the carry that I recommend to people. Okay. Okay, so to to round the rest of this episode out, um, and I mean, this is a pretty big topic. How but, long have we been going? Uh, oh, okay, only 45. Uh, we still got time. Yeah, we still have time for sure. Um, and this is a pretty big uh, point that I want to ask is, um, and B-Dub and I both kind of came to this conclusion, me more so asking on behalf of Denny <laughs> because <laughs> I'm on a team with Denny and, and B-Dub uh, out, out of curiosity, um, farm holes like what in the, how do you how do you get out of it like you you play carry you play position one like help i'm in a farm hole and i don't even know it like when do you recognize that you need to stop and you need to start helping your team? um if i noticed that like a four-man engagement happens and it looked like it was winnable and then my teammates die that's when i'm aware that i have already fucked the game up completely um the farm hole is roughly the, the uh, like okay well just for posterity's sake uh, maybe that's not the correct word anyway a farm hole is when you are just farming and you're not doing shit else like everything fucking sucks and all you're doing is farming right like you, there's shit you should be doing but like you're like my farm pattern there's a creep camp it's right here i can't just not farm it it's my <laughs> fucking job but that's you want to avoid that right mm-hmm. that's what you're talking about yeah i um just oh, talking man. about farming in general, like, right. um, what I notice a lot is um, there's obviously the the farming because, uh, you know, I need to get these items. And then when I get these items, yeah. that means I win. And then there's farming because, hey, I'm, a, I'm anti-mage and I farm and that's what I do. And then there's right. and then there's farming because you like the sound of gold. You know what I mean? And there's just kind oh, it's of like a great sound though. Like you just got say say you you just got your Daedalus on Sven or you just got your BKB on Sven, but you're still in the jungle farming. You know what I mean? I see it all the time. Um, and that's basically saying your window is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller right. and smaller and smaller. Um, so this is something I'm sure in the five K bracket that you okay guys i just got this item let's move type thing or I'm yeah close. that's uh that's a, that's that's definitely a very general way to go about it um in a more in a more specific way um like if I, okay if i was playing in an organized team uh the way that i would want to phrase it is and as 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 we said like a while ago we were talking about like windows um and like as soon as you get an item there's a fact that you just got like just think of an item as as like plus one like i have a plus one sven right now the longer i wait the more time they have to build a plus one anti-mage so the second i'm plus one sven i want to go immediately to minimize the the likelihood that there is also a plus one anti-mage on the enemy team um and then the second i see a plus one anti-mage i want to deny i want to stop not fight until we also have a plus one sven so the window is very small so if I if I'm playing uh, like if I'm playing Clinks and I'm trying to fight before Juggernaut gets or- uh, gets gets Manta because I just got Orchid, I'm gonna want to fight as soon as my t- as soon as I as I get my Orchid. But the second I see Sven has Manta, I'm not gonna want to fight anymore. Um, so what that means is there's there's a, there's a window and it may just be a very small window. There's not really a way to know. Um, so you need to emphasize going as soon as you get an item. And that sounds like you just say, oh, okay, I have an item, let's go. But what it really means is you ping out an item, you say, I'm going to have an item in, you know, like 30 seconds or something, or I need a minute to get this item, and then can we all group and go top? Because if you think about Dota 2, like, people can't just get somewhere whenever, like, especially not cores. Like, I'm sure as shit not just going to, like, stop farming and walk top. I'm going to farm my way top, or I'm going to, like, oh, a support says, oh, we're going we're gonna to fight there in a minute. Oh, I'm going to go, the, instead of placing my ward, you know, to see a rune for no fucking mm-hmm. reason, I'm going to, like, walk up there and then see, you know, see the rune or whatever, and then my, you know, four that was farming a creep wave will, like, TP, and then my carry is going to finish farming there, and then the core is going to deliver, deliver the item, and then my co-op has blink, and she can just blink around, whatever, and then she'll show up there. So, like, if you're in a farm hole... The answer is obviously after you reach a certain pinnacle to, 
um, to then go fight. And the way to emphasize you wanting to do that is by making sure that it happens the second you get an item, not like I get a BKB and then I wait around for 40 seconds for your TP to come off cooldown and you, you know, take your thumb out of your ass and figure out that you should just come top instead of wait 30 seconds for the 50% chance that a rune farms bottom when we're trying to take a top tier two or something. So just like emphasize when you're going to get it, let the team know and let you let, um, let them know what you want to do as soon as you get that item. Um, and that's kind of the only way to go about it. Um, otherwise, it's just like, hey, like, stop farming and fucking go help your team. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, <laughs> you know, it's kind of life. So, B, what have you, what have you been doing? Because this is something that you, you brought up uh, exactly here. Uh, you know, what, what do you think, um, or how have you, excuse me, how have you been dealing with these, these farming? With, like, with the you, farm you hall? Not, yeah. I mean, not very well. I mean, <laughs> Proud said at the beginning, like, if you if you've like the rest of your team has had an engagement and they've lost and you're somewhere farming, then you know you've done something wrong. And that happens more often than I would like to admit. That I'll just be kind of happily fa farming away. Like the thing is, I can kind of see them moving around, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I should go. And then I'm like, oh, but one last cramp. Like I can just get this one before anything happens. And then obviously, it's too late by that point, right? Like then everyone, yeah. and then I notice everyone dies, and then I'm like, oh, I should have been there, but I wasn't. And yeah, I haven't been dealing with it very well, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to say. It's difficult to say whether or not that really is your mistake, because like, if you are 400 gold from a from a deso, like the team should wait for your deso, right? Like they shouldn't right. just go without you. Um, but at the same time, like. If you're not, like, if you just finished it and you're, like, you know, you're an ogre club into your BKB, then, yeah, like, you probably you probably should have just TP'd there. But, yeah, like, a big part of it, as you said, like, you can see their little icons moving around yeah. and stuff. Um, and once once you see everyone kind of gravitating to one part of the map, there certainly is a chance that if you go there, everyone's just going to, like, you know, all farm the same three camps that just respawn next to each other. But at the same time, if everyone is in the same place, you're all just going to, like, melt, merge mines and, like, slowly edge each other towards, like, the enemy position. And then, like, a fight's just going to naturally yeah. break out. It's like when you get, like, a shit ton of humans together, they just, like, naturally form a mob. Same thing with, like, three Dota players <laughs> in one spot. They're just going to, like, gravitate each other to you um, or to themselves. I guess, like, the thing is, is I should say after I finish this item, I want to go and kill someone, right? Rather than kind of... Th I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's probably... I've just kind of realized this, that maybe I should be the one who's kind of saying, oh, when I finish this, I'm going to go and do this. I, I mean, I guess communication yeah. isn't that great anyway. And like, I don't use well, mic so you, ever, you, but I can always just ping, you know, I'm this far away from this. That's exactly what I yeah. do. If you, uh, yeah, just, just ping your quick buy and it'll say like, you know, like if your Sven says 300 gold from BKB, like that's a pretty strong statement. Like, I'm not going to see that and be like, <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Like, that's not as something as anyone ever is, like, brushed aside. They're like, oh, that's important. Or, like, PA is, you know, 300 gold off death zone. They're like, that's a big one. Let's wait for that yeah. one. And then, yeah. Or, like, if your Omni Slash is on cooldown, like, Omni Slash on cooldown, 40 seconds. I can't go. That's the hardest with clinks, because, like, my fucking ulti has, like, a 40 second, or what is it? It's, like, a minute duration. No, no, a 65 second duration, 85 second cooldown. So, like, if we start a fight when I have... 10 second duration on it or like we're looking to start a fight like it's gonna run out as soon as the fight starts and i'm like death pact on cooldown and they're like does that matter and like yeah it's a fucking big deal you can't fight <laughs> so to summarize this proud um this episode what uh would you say to somebody who is brand new that says no nah, i don't want to support I'd say nice. I like the last album. I like the last album. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new, brand new album. No, it's good. <laughs> it was good. Um, what, good. What do you say to somebody who, because B-Dub is, is not brand new. B-Dub, obviously, Open Dota puts her somewhere around 25, 2600. Um, but if you were to try and put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's like, I'm going to, I'm going to soldier through Dota 2. I'm going to try and learn it, but I'm not going to do it the support way. Like everybody says, I want to carry, uh, what, what, yeah, like what's going to um, be a quick summary? Like if you, if you just had to pass him in a train station and give him as much advice as you could or, or her, uh, or them, them. yeah, excuse there we me. Go. Uh, yeah, we managed to figure it out. Cool. Uh, so <laughs> I would say like pick heroes that have 
that have obvious obvious windows of when you should be doing things. So heroes that just have like ultimates that mean you win a fight, like Juggernaut and Luna. Um, farm to farm to an item. Once you get the item, let your team know, and then try to try to do something with it. Um, build yourself in a way that errs on the side of safety in terms of your starting items. So always having something like a stout shield, or if you're a ranged hero, a lot of the time I start a uh, ring of protection and build it into Aquila with what, kind of my first bit of gold. That's like my, my range starting, like with Luna, my starting on Luna is almost the same as with PA. It's just that, well, that the, the, maybe I shouldn't say PA cause most time I go the slippers build, but, um, it's, it's almost the same as my Sven or my strength carry build where you go like stout, tango salve mango and then normally like a clarity or something but instead of the stout i get a ring of protection and i turn it into a bassy and that's like my last hitting that's like my it's also a regen item it blocks damage and it's instead of you know 24 damage or whatever from a quilling blade i get a solid plus seven for my bassy and then you know then you get your boots and that sort of thing um but yeah just like go go heroes that have relatively safe landing phases go go safer item builds um, farm as safely as possible, and as soon as you get an item, try to team fight with it. And as you keep playing, notice whenever a fight didn't go well, were you able to play your hero? Because if you weren't, like if you weren't able to do what your hero does, then it was a bad engagement on your part. If you just lost and you got off all your shit, then turns out you're probably just not farming as well as you should have. So like, pay attention to when you die. If you just get fucking like blown out of the water you did something wrong to start that engagement or it wasn't an engagement you should have taken. If you just kind of lost, then it's, it was like a, a, probably like a farming issue or maybe your team just fucking sucks. One of the two. B, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would, I guess like that would be, um, I think like, you know, by pinging what items I have or whatever, like trying to say, you know, I'm ready to go in for an engagement. I think that's maybe the biggest thing I've picked up from this. Like, trying to take control yeah. rather than kind of farming away and then being like, oh, the rest of my team went in and I wasn't there. Like, I think that's, I, I don't know, that's something I've just like never occurred to me really before. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, that, that will definitely help um, a ton. And then as soon as you have the item and you want to fight, you keep continually ping it. Like, fucking if your Sven's like Black King Bar ready, like, you know, he wants to fight. He was trying to, he's trying to use it. Or like Luna, Eclipse, ready. Black King Bar, ready. Like, you're fucking good to go. Like, you're looking for some shit. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you guys, you have been listening. Oh, also, play Monkey King. Then That's the other thing. Play Monkey, just play King, Monkey King. Free wins. I have never Monkey played King. Monkey King. Oh, it's yeah, so well, much fun. Good. And it's actually surprisingly good. easy. As far as lasted animations, I always thought Phantom Lancer was the way to go. No, Monkey King may be the easiest hero. Yeah, he's a hero. ranged hero with no projectile speed. Yeah. What a fucking beautiful life. <laughs> it's, he may be the easiest hero in the game to last hit with. Um, I, I love him, and I can't thank Proud enough for bringing uh, Monkey King Carry into my life. It's been an amazing experience. Uh, thank you all for listening to Defense of the Patients. That is what you have been listening to for the past uh, f- hour or so. You can find us, uh, of course, at .p underscore show. Uh, B, where can people find your Twitter and find out about uh, the other stuff that you do, graphic design? And um, my Twitter is aupbdub. Um, a Y U P B dub. Um, okay. that's, that's my Twitter handle. Um, yeah. If you want to see like up? my A up, it's, it's like, um, back in the UK, it's kind of like a Midland slash Northern greeting. You say like A up. Oh, really? It's like, Oh, I thought it was like a goofy, like, you know, like goofy, the Mickey Mouse character. You're just like, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, like oh, yeah. Oh, like an a Cause like I wanted something like. It's beat up, but that was taken. Or like, hey, okay, it's beat up, right. but then all of that was taken. So I just went with a up. Oh. Okay, so it's a up, isn't like a y, and then like separate U-P. up. Up, yeah. Like. It's yeah. Okay, I mean, so, uh, in hindsight, okay. it's probably a bad handle to have because everyone's just like a y u p. Like, what is what is that? I, yeah. I think like also you'd never really see it written down either. Right, so people in the UK are probably still like, "What is that?" I, I, yeah, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start okay. greeting people with I. <laughs> proud. Where can people find you? Uh, at Proud Dota, which also oh. is bad for Twitter because what if I'm ever not? What if, what if Dota dies and what if I don't? You know, like what if? That's actually a pretty. What if I just good screen or screen name? That's a pretty good uh, handle to get. Actually, I'm surprised that was available. What? 
proud Dota? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's only one proud in, in Dota 2. No one else is proud of this <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, you can also find us on twitch.tv uh, forward slash dot PTV. Um, Not often, though. You can uh, leave iTunes reviews. We need one more to hit 100. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find the review. All that has is like three old ones. You have to go to most recent. Um, well, I, there's no button to go there. And may, maybe you're in the wrong country. I'm, I'm looking it's at the United wrong thing, States. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm in this yummy. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the good old anyway, states too. Anyway, I will say thank you so much for the reviews that have been left. Um, I've never really uh, had a review or had somebody leave such detailed feedback for me, and I really appreciated it. Um, the honesty really, really helps. Um, it's going to make the show more enjoyable, and it's also going to uh, help me improve at something I enjoy doing. So I can't thank you guys enough for the honest and. Uh, you know, sometimes harsh, but it that's what feedback what was is. This review? It was it was a good one. See, it was the it was the best. It was, like it was someone just fucking crapped on our lawn. No, or something. no, no, no. It was it was like an, an it was actually a, way. it was a wake up call review for me. Um, and I'm and I'm, oh, I'm was it, really really happy about the me? review. That's what I'm worried about. It, there there's uh, there's a little bit of mention of you, but it's mostly uh, okay uh, about me. And I'm I'm happy for it. And thank you so much. Um, it was well, read I can't yesterday. Take that much abuse right now. So it's not really a. It, it's just if you're if we're going to put ourselves in the public eye, we need I'm to fragile. we need to you know make sure that we're willing to take criticisms, especially constructive ones. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, I just need to be. I just need to. I don't, I'm fine. I'm good. Um, you can. I'm fine. I'm. I'm you set. can also email us uh, defense of the patients at gmail dot com. Uh, that's a great way to. Just, I mean, if you don't want to make your feedback public on, on iTunes, you can make your feedback private. Uh, if you want it read on the show, we will. Um, look, we're all trying to get better. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing uh, some sort of communication thing like podcasting. There's always going to be things that can make you better at it and uh, make it more enjoyable for all of you wonderful and awesome listeners. Um, yeah, but don't tell me. Tell them. You tell us, and, and then fine. we'll and then we'll slowly feed it to to proud. No, bit by bit, no, by, bit me, by let, bit. Let me be me, <laughs> and you guys can improve. I'll improve what I notice, oh, and wow. then you know what? What you see is wow. what you get. We're good. I'm good. <laughs> well, proud may or may not improve. You may just you may just stay the exact same the way. I he mean, is. I may get worse. <laughs> honestly, B Dub. Honestly, it we're we're all. Uh, I speak for defense of the patients as a whole. We're we're extremely excited to have you and Leafy Peachy um, uh, as uh, two new hosts, uh, co-hosts, uh, show hosts. Going to be fun hosts. Yeah, gonna it's be a super blast. exciting um, to be here. Especially as, yeah, as I've been like listening to the show for a while, it's it's quite it's quite surreal, I have to say. Hmm. Well, it's quite surreal to uh, to have uh, an extra voice, and it was also really nice to uh, come up with the episode outline with somebody else um, instead yeah. of doing it by myself and and getting ideas and and back and forth. Yeah, did you? Uh... Did you listen on Thursday when we were describing the show? I didn't. I I, I didn't. No. I'm, well, I highly recommend it, but I I can paraphrase it to you. It was essentially ah shit. What, what did I say? It was like, it was like we we'd have to do an episode, and then Roland felt like he had to, he had to come up with everything, so he would like show up, and he'd be like, uh, I don't know, can you teach me how to fucking raise my son? <laughs> and I was like, no, I can teach you a slark build though. <laughs> you're like, all right, well I have a fucking child now, and I'm trying to figure that one out. And I was like, uh. You teach about faces void, <laughs> and then that was the sh that was how the show ended. It, 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 honestly, it ended because um, I wasn't up to the challenge anymore, um, and yeah, you had a fucking child. Well, that's it's not really like the a kid; it's a just small human that was made out of fucking flesh and poop. Yeah, actually, pretty much. That's that's about it. Um, anyway, once yeah, again, that's really all they are. Huge thank you to everybody. I hope that uh, this fulfills that uh, itch in uh, that you that you may have had for Proudland uh, going off air. I'm I'm excited yeah. to bring back something of that ilk um, in the Teach yeah. Me Tuesdays. So uh, without any, fr and if it didn't scratch that itch, do not tell me that. <laughs> oh my God. Tell me, tell me. And I'm good. going to now fumble the ending. Uh, this well, next week it'll not be us. No. It'll be in two in two weeks. You'll get you'll get you'll get me again, and probably these people in some yes. weeks. But you, it'll be what Ur Ursi and Cyphus and Peaches? Yep. Ursi, Cyphus, and Leafy Peachy. Uh, beat up. What what are the like? 
quote unquote roles that you guys have in Deso Ladies? What is your position? What is uh, Leafy's position? How does that? How? What are your? Do you guys have titles? Well, I mean, we used to. Now that like that because they were they used to be quite a lot of managers before, um, and then you know due to like time commitments and stuff, now there's only three of us. We used to all have like different manager titles and everything. Now we're just managers. Uh, originally, I was you know in charge of like design and like social media stuff and all that good stuff and peachy was a uh, community manager and that now we just got rid of that now like we kind of all try to help each other out in various ways it's yeah more of a triumvirate kind of situation and that's super beat up oh, yeah. and leafy that's the that's the yes. triumvirate yes that is yes nice well, we look forward to hearing more about Desolades as uh, we hear more about you. I, we definitely got into some talks today on the Patreon, or not today. Well, it was today, but according, <laughs> you guys live in the future. We live in the past. Um, there are two new Patreon episodes, if you guys haven't noticed, for you patrons. Uh, one with uh, Ursi, Proud, and Leafy, and then the other with myself, Roland, Cyphus, and B-Dub. Uh, they were both... Our, our episode was good, I, I thought. I, I really liked our episode. I haven't listened to yours, obviously, uh, at this time. Maybe by this time I have. Anyway. It's all right. I don't, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and fumble else. around the closing on this. For those of you out there that want to learn about Dota 2 and become a better Dota 2 player, you've come to the right place. 